In this video, I'm going to show you how to hook up MongoDB to a RESTful API that uses Node.js, TypeScript, and Express. It's going to use an NPM package called Mongoose, which is a wrapper around a lot of nice MongoDB commands. And if you don't have a RESTful API already constructed, I do have one available for you on GitHub, which I already made a video for. I have the link in the description, as well as if you do not know where to get a MongoDB, I also have a video that shows you how to create a free one. So without wasting any time, let's go ahead and learn how to connect MongoDB to a RESTful API that uses TypeScript Express along with Node.js. Okay, so our first step is to open up a terminal, make sure you're in your project directory, and we're gonna type in npm install mongoose. Now we have to install the TypeScript definitions, so we do that with an npm install dash dash save dash dev at types forward slash mongoose. Once those are installed, we can go ahead and move on to the next part of our project. So what we're gonna do is I'm going to rename the sample routes I have here from my previous project, and I'm gonna call it book. And the reason that I'm doing that is that the sample collection I'm gonna be using inside of MongoDB is a collection of books. You can think of it almost as like a library. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and rename our controller and routes uh, files then we're gonna move on to the server file and I'm gonna rename this to book routes. I'm gonna go down to where I declare the API or declare the route, sorry. I'm gonna change it to book routes and I'm gonna get rid of sample here and name that to books. Next, I'm gonna to go, to uh, to go to my controller file. I'm gonna rename the server health check to get all books. Then I'm gonna to go to my routes, change that function to get all books and change this to forward slash get forward slash books. Now, the reason that I'm doing a forward slash get and then books instead of just like a get books command is because I really like to separate all of my API routes and functions just so that I don't get them mixed up in the future. Sometimes if you have two things that have similar names and one's using a variable and one's not, you might call the wrong route by accident. That can't happen, so be careful. Now, what we have to do is we have to actually input some config. So I'm gonna go ahead and first I'm gonna copy in some Mongo options that are pretty generic that I copy right from Mongoose uh, documentation itself. So I'm just gonna copy these here. You can go ahead and go through each one in the documentation to see what they do. But these are just some basic Mongo connection options that we don't have to put into our connection string. The next thing I'm gonna do is actually define some of my Mongo options. So I wanna save my username, password, and my connection string. Uh, all here inside of my config file. So like I have my other variables declared here, I'm going to first check my environment variables for my username, password, and uh, connection string. And if they're not declared, use the default values. The values that I'm typing in here are the values that I use to connect to my MongoDB, but don't worry, this will be gone by the time you use it. So you can't hack into this free database that I'm not using. Once I have all of that declared, I'm going to make a Mongo constant and it's gonna be an object and I'm gonna have five keys inside of it. First, I'm gonna have the host, which I'm gonna make equal to my constant Mongo host. Similar to this, I'm gonna do one for username, password, and options, all passing in that same environment variable. And then finally, the URL, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to have a string that starts with a MongoDB colon with two forward slashes I'm gonna insert my Mongo username variable, colon my Mongo password, and then I'm going to have it at my Mongo host. And this should be sufficient for my connection string. Finally, in the bottom, in the config object, I'm gonna add the Mongo defined by the Mongo constant. Now, the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go inside of my server file and I'm gonna add a little section here and I'm just gonna put a comment that says connect to Mongo. I'm going to import Mongoose from Mongoose. Now, in order to connect to MongoDB, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type Mongoose and then I'm gonna do a dot .connect. Inside of the connect function, I'm gonna pass in my config mongo url because it needs the connection string first then i'm going to pass in my config mongo options 
Once I've done that, I'm gonna throw in a then block to catch the result. And that's going to simply log with our namespace connected to MongoDB. Nothing special here. You can log the result if you want, and it will give you all the information about your Mongo and Mongoose connection. Then I'm gonna catch with an error, and I'm simply going to log the error.message along with my error object. Now again, this was based on a boilerplate I already made for a different video. So this logging.info and .error function is from my, co my custom logging class. So it may look a little bit different for you if you're integrating this into your own API. So now we're gonna create two new folders and we're gonna call that interfaces and models. And what we're gonna do is first, we're gonna define an interface that describes our document that we're gonna be using inside MongoDB. And then we're gonna attach it to a model. And this is how Mongo and Mongoose are gonna recognize that we actually have something called book. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new interface file called book.ts. And in the top, we're gonna to import a document from Mongoose like so. Next, we're gonna export default interface. I'm gonna call it iBook. We're gonna extend document with extends document. And on the inside, we're gonna have three different strings. We're gonna have a title of type string, an author of type string, and then an extra information of type string. Now, title and author are pretty self-explanatory, but the extra information string, what I'm actually gonna be doing with this little variable is showing you how to modify a document after it's been passed into Mongoose using some extra functions that are available to it. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to create our book schema. So inside of our models folder, create another file called book.ts. And first, let's, uh, let's go ahead and import our iBook from our interfaces book folder, like so. Then what we're gonna do is we're going to make a new constant called book schema of type schema, and that should auto import from Mongoose. And inside this object, inside the new schema constructor, we're gonna have a title. We're gonna then put a new object and we're gonna have type colon uh, string and then required true. We're gonna do the same thing for author. And for the extra information, we're just gonna have the type script, uh, string and we're not gonna have required. So basically what that means is when you're creating a new uh, book document, uh, when it's following this schema, it has to have those first two because the required uh, variable is set to true. So now we're gonna comma this object and open a new one. And we're gonna pass in a mongoose option here called timestamps true. And what this does is automatically creates an updated at and created at timestamp for you that attaches it to your document in the database. So imagine if you were using a MySQL table and you had a created at date or an updated at date, this is taken care of for you automatically by Mongoose and MongoDB. Finally, at the bottom, we're going to export default mongoose.model. Then inside uh, some chevrons, we're gonna put our uh, interface of iBook. Uh, inside of the function, we're gonna classify this as book with a capital B and pass in our book schema. What this is doing is exporting our model for us to use in our RESTful API. And the reason we pass in the iBook right there is so anytime we use a mongoose function like find or update by ID or delete one, uh, whatever is being returned inside the then block it's going to know to use iBook, therefore we're gonna have access to all of our variables. So now that we have our model defined, it's actually time to start playing with the data. So let's go to our book controller and get rid of the information that's in here already inside this function. Let's go ahead and import book from our models file. So you're gonna find that in models book. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna type book.find. So this is an actual mongoose function. We're gonna then throw an execute block, a then block, and a catch block. Inside of the then block, let's go ahead and call a function called results as the prop. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna return a response. So res.status 200, meaning that we found the results. We're gonna pass in some JSON, and we're gonna type books colon results. So that should return 
any books that we do have in the database as an array for us here. And let's go ahead and return another variable called, let's say count, and we'll pass the results.length. In the catch block, let's throw an error, and we're gonna return that error by returning a response status of 500, another JSON block. We're gonna pass in the message as the error.message, and then just the actual error object itself. So that will come out as error inside of something like Postmon. So now that we have everything in here, let's go ahead and test this route. So I'm using TS node dev for this specific project. And let's go ahead and open up Postmon. And I am going to create a new request. And how I'm gonna do that is I'm going to use get and I'm gonna do localhost 1337 forward slash API forward slash books, get books. And what you're gonna see is that it returned an empty array with a count of zero. So technically this is working properly because we haven't input any information yet. So our final step is going to be to create a new function that actually creates a book. So let's go ahead and copy our old get all books function and paste it above, change the name to create book and get rid of this function here because we're not gonna be finding anything. And let's go ahead and what we're gonna do is we're going to let and then some brackets, we're gonna type author and title be equal to our request.body because that's what we're gonna be sending. We're gonna make a constant book equal to new book and we're gonna define a few things here. First, we're gonna import mongoose from, uh, from mongoose again so we can access the object ID function and inside of our book object that we've created, we're gonna make an underscore ID equal to a new mongoose.types with a capital T dot object ID called as a function, and then pass in our author and our title. Remember, we don't have to pass in that extra information yet. Next, we're gonna return book.save, and then we're gonna throw another then block and another catch block. Inside of the then block, we're gonna type our result function, and we're gonna return a response.status of 201, which stands for created, add a JSON, and we're gonna call book equal to result because the save function does in fact return that. And then right here, we're gonna throw the catch block on and it's going to be pretty much the exact same thing. So we're just gonna copy and paste that from our last one. We're gonna save. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back into Postmon. Actually, before we go into Postmon, we actually have to call this function from our routes. So let's do a router.post. We'll do create slash book. And then we'll do controller and actually we have to export it in our controller here as well too. Sorry. So let's go ahead and copy and paste that create book into our export default, then go back and do our controller.create book, save it and open Postmon again. Now we can go to our post request. We can add, we can copy and paste the last one, but instead we can do create book. Go to body, select raw JSON. And we're gonna throw in an author and a title. I'm just gonna put, uh, I don't know, Bob. <laughs> and then we could just go ahead and put in a, a stupid name here for our book. And once we've done that, we can go ahead and go ahead and hit the send function. And at the bottom here, you're gonna see that it returns the book that we created. And it actually added those extra created add and update at fields for us. Now, the final thing we're going to do is we're going to play around with uh, Mongoose a little bit and take advantage of something that it can do. And that's something called a post function, a pre function. It has uh, a bunch of extra functions you can actually do that you can look up in the Mongoose documentation. So if I type in book schema dot post, I'll be able to basically choose one of the one of the actions that I want to bind this post operation to. And what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna pick the save option. So what this means is that I can actually modify the data after it's been created with that create route. And how we do this is we do our book schema dot post and then put chevrons with the iBook inside of it. And then I'm gonna pick save and we're gonna create a function here. And all I'm gonna do in this extra function here is I'm gonna call this dot extra information and I'm going to just throw some throw out, uh, a string here. Now, 
You may be asking yourself, why is this useful? Well, if you're making something like an online store, what you can actually do is go ahead and update your inventory with functions like this after a save or a create or an update. Uh, it becomes very, very useful when you have to update multiple schemas or things like that at once. So once we do that, we can go back into Postmon. I can change the title of the book or something. And then when I hit create, you're going to see that the extra information field is being returned. So now Mongo actually sees that this is populated with our post function and has returned the information properly to us. So there you have it, guys. Uh, that's how you use Mongoose in a basic way with a RESTful API that uses TypeScript, Express, and it's all built on Node.js. Uh, if you like this, please give me a like and subscribe. And if there's a video that you want to see, just let me know in the comments and I'll be happy to give it a shot for you. All right, guys, see you next time. Mm -hmm.